Hello, this is Andrew with XLaser, and today we're going to take a quick look at getting started with the XLaser Mercury control system using the ETC EOS family of consoles. So I have right here uh, the EOS PC software running. So you can see the uh, typical EOS screen here. And you can see in the bottom right corner here, I have a view of what the laser output looks like. So I'm just projecting on a wall here in the studio. And uh, so I just got a little, little uh, laser effect running here. So let me start a new show file here, and I'll show you how we got to this point. So I'm just going to go into uh, new here in the EOS software. So this is now a new blank show file. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in the profiles. Uh, right now, the profiles that are in the ETC library are not quite 100%. So uh, for right now, we have a starter file that we can send out that will have the uh, profiles that have been tested and, uh, and are working quite nicely now. And then we'll uh, work with the uh, ETC to get those into the library as soon as we can. So I'm just going to open up the starter file here, and this basically has nothing but the profiles in it. Um, so you can see here I just went to USITT ASCII, uh, and I'm going to import as custom fixtures here and use this starter file. All right, so now the fixtures are in there, so we'll go to our patch and select channel 1 here. And uh, we'll click on type, and I'm going to go to custom, I'm sorry, go to favorites here. So I've got manufacturer, I can search. Uh, and now the uh, profiles that we imported should be here in our are in our favorites as custom fixtures. So to start with, I'm going to patch a master on channel one. And uh, the way the fixture is set up here, we have a set of master channels that control your overall mode and size and intensity and so forth. And then after that, we have up to four builders. And so on uh, channels two through four here, I'm going to go ahead and patch a basic builder. So I have three basic builders here. You can have up to four. You can have as little as one, depending on the level of flexibility that you need. Uh, and that's based on the personality that's set on the laser uh, itself. All right, so now those are in here as fixtures. So let's go ahead and patch these in. I have my laser set to address one. So I'm going to put uh, the first one, which is the master. And that's the first set of channels in the fixture. I'm going to set that to one. The next one here will start at seven. And then at 34 excuse me, 35. And then the last one here will be at 63. There we have it. So now uh, these are all patched and should be ready to go. I have them hooked up through DMX. So that will, of course, depend on your setup. So we'll go back to the live table here where we can see that everything's patched up correctly. And uh, let's get started uh, doing some laser effects. So the first thing we're going to do is select the master here. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring up the intensity up to full. And then under the fixture mode, I'm going to select builders enabled. So we have here uh, external input, fixture disabled, and then builders enabled. So these control different modes of operation. So if I had an ILDA signal hooked up to the laser, I'd want to select ILDA external input here. But since I'm just using this on DMX, I want to use the Mercury system in, this, in the laser to generate all the effects. I'm going to select builders enabled. Next, I'm going to deselect that master. And I'm going to select the first builder. And I'm going to start by just kind of creeping up the intensity here, and uh, we'll start to see something. All right, so there's a circle. So that's our first pattern here. This is the basic thing that you start out with on page one, pattern one, of uh, all the effects that we have built in. So typically, the first thing you'd want to do uh, after you've made sure that your laser is patched and everything is set up your zone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that here in the master. So I'm going to, again, deselect the builder, select the master. And uh, in the master here, I have control over the overall position. So you can see I can move the circle to the right there, or I can move it up, and then I can adjust the overall size. So generally, when you're setting up your zone, uh, you're going to want it to have something that shows your maximum size. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the builder. I want to come down here to clip directory. This is where we select the page of patterns that we have preloaded into the laser. So I'm going to select the test patterns here. And you can see here that this test pattern page, pattern one, is just a big old rectangle. So this shows me my maximum uh, possible angle in both the horizontal and vertical directions. So now I can go back to the master. And now when I bring the uh, size down here, this will show me the absolute maximum area the laser can project. So typically for most situations with lasers, you're generally going to have a wide, shallow uh, shallow area. Uh, that's typical for just most configurations of lasers for aerial effects. So you, your zone would uh, generally look something like this. 
All right, in my case, I'm just projecting on a wall here so I can keep that pretty big. And you'll notice that as I keep going on this uh, vertical scale here, it gets smaller and smaller, and then it starts to get bigger again. It's actually inverting here. So this is one way that you can uh, control the inversion of your projection area. So I'm gonna go back to home on that, home on the Y. Um, and then also, if I uh, bring that down again, I have control over the position as well. So I can move that whole area up and down as needed. So again, I'm just gonna home all that because I'm on a wall here. I don't have to worry about that. So once I have that set, uh, it's generally a good idea to park this fixture. So that way you don't have to worry about accidentally changing that in your programming. Um, depends on uh, what kind of consoles you usually have some sort of facility to lock it out so on some consoles it might be freezing or parking um, but generally it's a good idea to set the master up so you don't accidentally change it once you have your zone set all right so now i'm going to go back to the builder here and we'll start looking at what we can do with this thing so i'm going to go back to the uh, clip directory here so again this is where we select our uh, page of patterns so pack one, page one, this is all going to be different kinds of circles. So I have a plain white circle here. I can go to a rainbow circle, circles that have some extra dots in them, different colors, kind of broken up circles, all sorts of different things, all based on circles. Page one is all based on lines. So I have different kinds of just straight lines, angled lines, lines with colors, lines with dots. Page three is all going to be curves. So I've got some swirl patterns here arcs, all kinds of different things. So they're all arranged thematically like that. And later on we get into triangles, dots, letters, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm gonna go uh, through here and just select a pattern that I like. And I'm a big fan of the uh, curves here that are on page three. So I'll select this kind of swirl here. Now we have a number of ways that we can manipulate this. So if I go back up here, you'll see that by default the color picker is not active. That's because a lot of these a lot of these patterns have colors in them. So unless you select a color macro, uh, there's no actual color effect um, responding to these RGB channels. Um, so if I want to if I want to change the overall color here, I can select macro one, and now you can see I can use the color picker to pick my color and do whatever color I want over the whole pattern. If I want something a little more interesting, if I want to have more than one color going on, I can do that through different macros. So some of these will be a little hard to see. We'll see them a little better in uh, when we get to some other effects. But here we go. So here's a color band effect. So now I have white and I have got, I've got this sort of magenta. So you can see this is controlling, the color picker is controlling that red right now, that uh, sort of reddish color. And then I have this other set of RGB channels here that I can use to control that other channel. So if I bring that green down, we get into uh, more of a magenta and red, which is probably hard to see on the video. Uh, if I take the red out, maybe we'll, there we go. So we got more of a cyan and uh, red thing going on here. Uh, unfortunately, it's a limitation of the ETC profiles right now that we can't have two color pickers. So you just have to use the second set of uh, RGB here. All right, so what else can we do with this? So we have a whole set of uh, beam effects here which are our prism channels. So uh, what we can do is, we right now we have a single swirl here, but if I select one by two, now we have two swirls, three, four, five, and so on, triangular, um, all sorts of things. So we've got a bunch of different effects that we can uh, use to multiply the pattern and get more things going on at once. Um, once I have a prism selected, I have control over the spread using these two channels here. So here's our horizontal spread, and here's our vertical spread. There's another prism channel, which is uh, down here under Z rotate four. And this applies an incremental rotation of each element of the prism. So if I want this whole image to be radially symmetrical through the prism, I can uh, just increase the Z rotate four parameter here. And that adds enough rotation from one element to the next that they become symmetrical. In addition to the color macros, we also have motion macros. So these are here under animation select. And you can see if I select this, we start to get a bit of a wave going on this uh, on this whole image. Um, there's a bunch of different things already preset in here, different kinds of waves, there's some motion effects, all sorts of different things that you can kind of play with and uh, use to add either texture or just interest and motion into your effects. So there's a speed and a size recorded into this macro, but I can override that using the animation speed and animation size controls. So we can see here animation speed is selected uh, as default right now. So if I go over here and select an override 
Um, right now it's at maximum. So if I bring that down, I can make it slower. If I bring it up, I make it faster. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and keep an override on that and just make it really slow. So you can probably barely see that that's moving. And then I can control the size as well. So if I uh, select the scale here, so this is the uh, motion macro override. So if I select scale here and then kind of max that out, and I'm gonna bring up the speed a little bit too so we can see that moving a little bit. So now we have the same basic effect, but it's, it's much larger and slower than it was before. So this is a good way to add some texture to your liquid skies or just to your beams or whatever, uh, whatever you have going on that you wanna add a little more motion and, and interest to. Another thing we can do is we can rotate the whole image. So that's under Z rotate here. So you can see this is just a fixed indexed rotation of the overall image. We also have a uh, channel that controls the spin in that axis. So that's up here under Z spin. So you can see I can increase this and then the whole thing starts spinning continuously. And we've got uh, forward and reverse controls right here. So I'm just gonna put that back to stopped. And uh, we also have control over the size of the image overall. So that's under width and height here. So if I increase this, you'll see just like with the master controls, this actually, uh, as I increase this, it gets smaller and then it gets bigger again, but it's inverted. So this is again a way of just easily inverting your overall image, either horizontally or vertically. So if I bring this overall image down in size, and then of course, just like a moving light, we can actually control the pan that's tilt. So you have your typical pan tilt control here, which I can move around and move the whole thing. And uh, so these are all accessible through here, uh, through the ML properties here. Um, but of course, you can also program these into your cues, just like you would with a moving light, uh, LED fixture, or any other kind of intelligent fixture, uh, in including controls like uh, marking, so you can do move in black type of things, and control fade times and all that stuff. Programs exactly like you would any other fixture. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, let us know if you have any feedback on uh, this or anything else you'd like to see on the EOS, and uh, we'll uh, help you out with that. And if you have any questions about Mercury in general or looking for a demo, feel free to give us a call. Thanks.